Holy Fury, is that for CK2? Yes. And Holy Fury, oh my gosh, looks good. You can definitely expect to see a hell of a lot of Crusader Kings on this channel when Holy Fury releases, because it looks amazing. Rabundan's done. I lost a battle? No, it was against their war fleet. Um, yeah, you were in kind of a silly place. So how about we just have you go and park up in Dara? I lost 30 ships. That kind of sucks. France, where is your fleet right now? All right, the Dutch are leaving. I'm wondering if I can sneaky my way in over here and sink a bunch of English ships as Revengi. There goes Brabant. Where is the French fleet? Their fleet is huge. Where it was. Emphasis was. Interesting. Actually, the... English aren't even on the top page. Really? Uh, yeah, really. Wow. 69 ships, England. Even the Dutch have more than you. And the Dutch are tiny in comparison. I told you, this, this war was going to be like a, a major leveling ground in terms of naval power. I think most of the fleets over here are actually uh, colonial. Yeah, they are. I need another air. Um, more free money? Ooh, three, five, three, four, five. That sounds a lot better, actually. Uh, let's go and attack that one. We're just going to go and carve some of these guys up. Kill them. You're still taking that fort. Good. Appears that the air has become greedy. Shame on you, but I'm not surprised. Also, you are chilling out over there. Then I need you to get another 21 ships, please. Bring you back up to 100. We need to be stealing that Spanish money, even though I'm totally allied with Spain. Ooh, three innovativeness for 5,500 ducats. Thankfully, I have 5,700. Bargain. All right, here's a big battle. What are we actually fighting? That's 23 heavies. How the hell has Dutch Columbia got 23 heavy ships? I mean, I have naval ideas, so I should be okay. And my galleys do kick ass and take names, even not in the inland seas. Not, not as much. But they are still extremely powerful. Yeah, we're killing them. We're actually annihilating them. <laughs> You're being beaten by galleys. Ha <laughs> ha! My, navy, my heavies are being sunk rather alarmingly quickly. But they were seriously old, so it's fine. Tuscany gets pissed off, but I get trade power or I get dev costs and local goods. This is in Florence, and if memory serves... Actually, Florence is a trade hub, isn't it? It is. Oh, I definitely want the trade power. Because that is a trade hub in Genoa. There we go, sank 22 heavies and captured 8. So, <laughs> I actually recouped the losses because that's how my navies roll. So we're going to deselect you, we're going to group you. And suddenly my war galley two-decker fleet has become a bunch of three-deckers because I'm the knight and I'm crazy like that. And then a couple of great frigates which I'm going to add to the... Severe trade node. The audacity of having done some damage to me. Oh, there's the Dutch. 33 heavies. That one I'd struggle a bit more with. Unless, of course, they decide to divide up their navies. In which case, yeah, that's not going to end well for you. Where are you going? I wonder if they're trying to get to me. Because if they are, then they're in trouble. I repair while I'm still out at sea. Let's start following them. No, they're not. They're going somewhere else. Coast of Morocco. They might be trying to blockade my transports. Oh, I wonder if they're invading the Congo. 
Cardinal Minister. One of the cardinals in the Knights has proven to be a skilled administrator and already proves useful advice, provides useful advice to the Guildmaster. Uh, Grandmaster. Uh, no, I don't need you. Because that just means that you get a hold over us. It's because the colonies are fighting each other. How are the colonies doing? You guys are doing terribly on land. Oh. Yeah, so apparently the French colonies are way stronger than the other colonies. The government overhaul is a hole in Dharma seems promising. Yeah, I agree with that. In fact, I would say that the government overhaul and policy and estate, all three of those are getting a huge overhaul, are probably the most exciting things. The thing I'm slightly concerned about is I suspect those are free features and not actually a feature of Dharma. Dharma, I think, is going to be the trade companies and also the India overhaul. I don't know for sure. Like, it hasn't been announced what's being paid for and what isn't. But those all sound suspiciously like they'll be free features. In which case, I'm not too sure what you're paying for in Dharma. We'll see. But I'm still looking forward to Dharma because E4 is still easily my favourite Paradox game. And yeah, man the guns for Hearts of Iron, completely overhauling naval combat. Like, the theory behind it, talking to Podcat, was very positive. Having seen how they usually implement such stuff in Hearts of Iron... I remain a little bit sceptical. Like, they had massive hype about the revamping for air forces in Hearts of Iron, and I'm still a little... Eh, it's better. It's still not amazing, but it's better. Hype for the new Viking campaign. Uh, they did announce that they're redoing a lot of the Scandinavian provinces in Crusader Kings. There was actually a dev diary about that today. Haven't read it yet. So unusual seeing someone actually help the AI ally on all fronts. Well, there's no reason not to in single player. And hell, even in multiplayer, if I can help the AI against one of my rivals or enemies, I'll do it. <laughs> Mordred is embracing the Knights' naval idea as piracy. Yeah, I am. I really am. Trade companies definitely need a rework. Yeah, they are weak as is. Same with estates. I, I don't like estates. And actually, it was funny. Last year at Paradox Con, they were saying, we can't touch estates. Estates are one of our biggest regrets, but because it's a paid DLC, we can't touch it. This year, they're like, yeah, we're completely changing it. <laughs> so, kudos to uh, Paradox for that. And I suspect that might be because of the success of Apocalypse on Stellaris, where they said, okay, it's okay sometimes to tear up the rules, which are already well established, so long as like the outcome is better. And yes, Apocalypse was a big change. And a a positive one. It's okay to change your mind with design mechanics. Just make sure you follow through on it and you don't just do it half assed and half heartedly. In the same way that we're constantly learning new ways of playing the game, they're constantly learning new ways of improving the game. Hell, that's the entire idea behind DLCs. Alright, 176 ships. How repaired are you? Not very. I think I'm just going to stick you back in port. I would love to go after these guys though. Oh, the English fleet's there too. What English fleet's transports? Stop being so scared of non-factors. Oh, they're, they're having a jolly old go over here. Well done, Bremen. It's gonna cost you, but well done. At least you're trying. Unlike Austria, who seems to be dying. They can't be trying. They're too busy dying. Yeah, I'm excited to uh, try Mio. Like, I was very tempted to start my Mio series because I've been planning to do that for a while today. Or whenever this series finishes. But I really want to be able to sit down and think about it. And if I'm going to be kind of going, doing a bit of the series, then taking a week out and then doing it again. I thought that was a little too broken up. Especially when I'm learning something new. Um, so yeah, I will be doing Mio, definitely, 100%. I just don't know exactly when. Also, are those Dutch revolutionaries? No, they're Helder revolutionaries. Uh, Ulm has just pieced out of their side. And the revolutionaries are dead. Long live the revolution.
See you, newbies. I can't build Suez because Ethiopia owns the southern half. And Ethiopia's an ally, so no, I will not be attacking them. However, spheres of influence in Victoria too are a thing. At that point, all, ha all um, gloves are off. Life 4 is a deeply flawed game, but it's fun to play if you can put up with the BS. Boy, 3 is unbearable for you between the UI and overcomplexity. I really need to do Hot to Find 3 because that game needs patience to learn, but it's rewarding ultimately, especially when you play with something like Black Ice. But it, it definitely needs some patience. And it's a long campaign, usually, if you do that. Okay, fleet is repaired. Do we have any wayward duchies in the Mediterranean? No. Do we have any wayward duchies down here? Yes. Hello, wayward duchies. Oh, more wayward duchies. Let's murder them. Who are you? You're the heavy fleet. Ah, so the other one was the transport fleet. I see. Yeah, you guys should definitely get into that fight as soon as possible because they're currently just fighting my light ships and they're a bit squishy. Okay, here we go. This is their heavy fleet, remember. They're dropping like flies. We do outnumber them three to one, but still. I wonder how many... Alright, bets. How many heavy ships am I stealing from this battle? There are a couple of lights. I think that was uh, Colombia again. How does Colombia have such a large navy? I wonder if the uh, nationality of their overlord matters for that type of thing. So even though I lost some heavies, I actually came out of it net five heavies ahead. So regardless of how many I lost, I, I got more. In fact, I gained nine. So nine's your answer. And I only lost eight lights. That's acceptable. Battle fleet, severe, merge. So I'm now up to 19 heavy ships, having started this with 14 old ones. This is now... What? 17? Yeah, 17... Three deckers and two two deckers. I would say that was pretty good going. Sorry, I didn't give you much time to actually get the uh, bets in there, but it's fine. It's fine. It served its purpose. Oh, the Dutch are down here in Niger, fighting the French. Well, considering the amount of damage being done in the colonies, like, I don't want to hurt the Dutch too much. I might actually uh, pull back at this point and just beat armies back that are trying to invade me. I mean, what I might actually do is grab my battle fleet and just park you there. Also, that's a bunch of transports. Don't need you. Five. I'm an oracle. Well, it was nine, not five. It was five net. Nine total. Right, I have money. What shall I spend money on? Again, I need to resist the temptation of just, oh, I was doing this anyway. This this was just knight's policy. Build all the manufactories. Did we beat Bremen? We did beat Bremen. I thought so. Like, all of my forts are level 8, so yeah, good luck invading us. Austria on low. Bremen will be out soon. The Dutch have had enough. England's on medium. In fact, we probably could launch an invasion of e England at this point. They are down to 51 heavies. We still have 68. So most of our heavies must actually be Ethiopian or colonial. And virtually all of their heavies are going to be colonial. Doomsday for Toromak. There it is. French-Austria Imperialist War. Austria will cede Baden, Sungau, Zurich, Alsace to France. Uh, English Mexico will cede one, two, three provinces to France. Dutch Columbia will cede one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fuck, thirteen to France. 
That's annoying. I was really hoping the Dutch would still be a power here. Austria will cancel all treaties with England. France suffers 48 points of AE. I gain 1.7 prestige out of this war. Really? That's it? You didn't take any money? Oh, and a bunch of favours, which are actually fairly nice. Well, not so much relevant anymore. Yeah, that that's a butchering. Bugger. I was looking forward to having a decent Dutch colonial game, but that's not going to happen anymore. Why do you want military access? Why are you fighting anyone? A council after our own tastes. To our chagrin, but not our surprise, the perpetual struggle between the Grand Master and each institution of the Knights, ecclesiastical, educational, legal, medical, fiscal, administrative, and publicistic, only increases with each reform suggested by establishing like-minded people in various institutions. Perhaps that will persuade the reluctant populace to change their minds to a more adaptable form. Uh, we can get a level one theologian or 10 devotion. Considering I'm sitting at 90 devotion, Having 100 devotion sounds better than 90. Prussia has declared war on Austria with a nationalism CB. Bye, Austria. It was nice knowing you. Right, I need to bring the armies home. I mean, we could stay out in the Netherlands on permanent holiday, but I don't think the Dutch would appreciate that. And as far as I can tell, I'm not having rebel uprisings. Nope. I'm actually sorely tempted to go and help Dutch Brazil with their uprising. And they would allow me to do it. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, transports. You're a transport. I want one of my decent generals to do this. You'll do. Can I show an income comparison? I can. I am the wealthiest by one ducat. <laughs> so Ming and I are very, very close. France is further off than I thought they would be. Actually, Ming is going to jump ahead. France and I are going to close that gap quite a lot because I'm stealing a lot of French income right now because I have a huge overwhelming majority of Genoa and they just lost their navy so France will jump back and then there's a huge gap between France and England a gap of 200 ducats a, a year that's a huge amount is that a month it might be a month a uh, month okay yeah so it's 600 600 400 200 so there's already a 200 jump between Ming and I to France. And let's take a look at Genoa, because Genoa is the wealthiest node in the world. It's 220 ducats right now, compared to the English channels, actually. We're only one ducat ahead of the English channel. I might need to investigate that. Even the blueback's got 134. Yeah, I haven't been focusing trade very heavily, and I probably should. Like, we're stealing a bunch from Sevilla, but obviously somewhere further back... England's taking a big chunk. That's going to Sevilla. So it's not from the Caribbean. Ah, it's the Americas. Yeah, most of the money in the Americas is going to the English Channel. And so is all the money from the Ivory Coast. Which is actually one of the reasons I decided to get involved in the Ivory Coast. Because I wanted the Congo so I could push money towards Sevilla instead. I would need a merchant for that. Where are my merchants currently? I could take the guy out of Aleppo. Because regardless of whether it goes to Alexandria or Constantinople, I'm going to get it anyway. 
Although it's a lot better going to Alexandria because I have a bigger hold. Yeah, I think we're going to move the Aleppo merchant. Or Tunis. Tunis is giving me very little. We'll take Tunis. <coughs> that guy. And then I'll need to park a trade fleet down here too. Also, I can get technology. Not yet. Right, force limit. I am still like a hundred under. So we're going to build some more light ships. Something like that. Don't do that in halves. It's just France against Austria. Oh, sorry, Prussia against Austria. Prussia against Austria, Hungary, Ulm, and Hamburg. Like, the Austrian alliance has just been shattered. Versus Prussia, Hess, Hellra, and Lundberg. And Austria is going to get annihilated because, for reasons, they have no army. I, I, I don't know what those reasons could possibly be. It was me. I'm that reason. Right, I was going to move an army over to the Dutch. Um, you. Load on a boat and then send you halfway across the world over to there. Go. Then the other side, I'm going to start just splitting out mercenaries. And we're going to reinforce with full-time soldiers. Because we have quite a lot of manpower. I feel like this is... Feasible. Although, a bunch of my troop building places right now are building ships. Oh well, we'll deal with it. You could really do with being over here, I think. So you. Assign template, standard. Just build me those units automatically. You. Sign template. Standard. And start drilling. Drill. You can definitely do that too. Sign template. Standard. You need a general, and then we can start drilling you. Or I could just give you the marshal, or the king. Grandmaster, that's the word. You can do the same thing. You actually need far fewer. You can have the air. And drill. So there's just two armies missing them right now. Who are my enemies and who are my friends? I don't really have any enemies. My friends are France, Castile, the Papal States, and Ethiopia. I mean, my enemies probably, you could say, it would be Hungary and the Ottomans. Ooh, Kazan just gobbled up Tver. Is Kazan a monarchy? Kazan might, as a last action in the game from Russia. I doubt it. They're not going to have time before the next war. And they need Novgorod to do it. And Novgorod is still owned by Novgorod. Novgorod might actually outlast Tver, even though Tver basically were Russia at one point. So much money is about to flow into those mercenaries gone. Yep. Also, yo, nobility. How about them troops? Yeah, you know it. And that one. Although that makes you a little bit aggro with me. You guys adore me, crikey. Monopoly charters would increase your influence. That, I'll take some money off of you. And also Diplo support. And then with aforementioned money, I will then go and build. Many factories are all done. Was I working on universities? I feel like I was. Yes, I totally was. This is for the literacy. 
There we go. Can I form something? A country? No. I mean, theoretically, I could have formed um, Kingdom of God, but it's like six years until the end of the game. Not going to bother. Plus, I quite like the idea of just having the knights plastered across the, the screen. Oh, you fought the rebels. You don't need me. Or else they just broke your country. You're still... You are still a... Minion. Let's go and help them in Dutch Niger. Right, that army is the one I'm transporting. You still have mercenaries? No. I somehow got rid of your mercenaries at sea. <laughs> you know how that one works. I hope they know how to swim. Uh, that's a 10% tech cost reduction. I like the sound of that. Beak. I can't believe that we're basically two full idea groups, like, out. That's how many monarch points I've been spending throughout this game, just trying to keep ahead with technology. Or keep up with technology. And just having had really bad rulers throughout. The other thing I could do is just drop you guys off in the Congo and have you build your forces up to full strength. That's probably what I should be doing. Austria and Hillary want access. And I say no. Ndongo gets regulated economic growth or bad things. Mm, no. I feel like the Knights in Victoria too should totally go fascist considering they're already a militaristic political order. True, but they're also extremely tolerant considering I haven't actually completed religious ideas and they have a lot of cultures living amongst them. They're pretty enlightened, like the technology is good. They focus a lot on techno on um trade, which is liberal. How mercantilist are they? Oh, they're super mercantilist. <laughs> yeah. Which is definitely more like an interventionism. They're probably more interventionist than fascist. You can start drilling, you can also grab standard. Right, and you've arrived. Standard. Boom. Let's get your troops in. Yeah, the scramble for Africa is going to be very interesting. I'm glad the Dutch still have a hand in on that one. I'm, I'm pissed that they lost so much of this. I am so happy that this still exists, though. This is probably the thing I'm the happiest about. Look! Look at that glorious Vinland. That is amazing. That's also going to put um, Norway in a really strong position. Owning Scotland and Norway, having very good relations with Denmark, and a possibility of going after a very weak England. I can see a bright future for them. What is my favourite game? I know it's a big question. You're probably watching it right now. Either that or Mountain Blade. I do like Mountain Blade. But I've been playing a lot more of this one recently. Those two are... Yeah, E4 I'd say is my favourite. The Mountain Blade's probably second. Technically you dated a member of the Knights since she was a member of St John's Ambulance. Yeah, technically you did. No, St. John's Ambulance are the Knights. Because the Knight's full name is the Knights of St. John. St. John's Ambulance are the English derivative thereof. Right, 
All right. Uh, do I have any generals I can still give out? Because I'm quite a lot over my force limit right or my uh, general limit right now. Although, going innovative does allow me to. Oh, it's only one. That's actually the other downside is because technically I'm still a duchy. So I don't have the extra diplomats, I don't have the extra cultures, and I don't have the extra generals that an empire or even a kingdom allow. And 32 is the final one, isn't it? Or is it 34? 32 is the final one. Yep, 32 is the final one. Well, I'm going to max these two out. Easy. I'm not sure about admin. Depends whether I can resist spending any admin points or not. Get some more universities. Sort these by production type. Ivory. Mm. Oh yeah, and the coal we definitely should. Oh, those are the new coal provinces. Right, yes. Do those have... Furnaces? Yes. It was Hunyad and you, I think. Yes. Marvellous! Because that's a 5% goods produced for the whole faction. Not just for that. This is why furnaces are redonkulous. Goods produced modifier plus 5%. It does not say local goods produced. That's faction wide. And yes, they stack. So having three coal producing provinces means I get a plus 15% goods produced. This is also why my goods production income is so high. Because of those furnaces. Well, partially. I also have a lot of stuff. Also, it's late game, and industrialization does start to massively overtake taxation. It also increases the number of goods in a province, which means that the trade value of those provinces also increases, increasing trade income. 